Hey guys, and here we are back with another video and today with a really cool gadget which is the GPD Windows 10. Now before we begin this video, I would just like to mention that about a year ago we took a look at the GPD Android version running 4.4.2 so a bit outdated but it's still a great device and costs half the price of this new uh, Windows 10 GPD version. I'll post the link right over here just because there are a lot of things that we can do uh, on this older machine that we will be able to do on this one as well. So it will be a matter of budget, a matter of uh, a personal preference in the operating system and so on and so forth but more on that on the review. Today we are going to talk about, about the G GPD Windows 10 uh, which is one of the coolest gadgets that I reviewed this year and I will risk to say that it will be on my top 3 top 5 favorite gadgets of 2017. I will not say that it's my favorite one because we are in May and until December 2017 there's a lot to cover but it is a cool cool gadget. So that being said guys let's go straight for the video. Hope that you guys enjoy it and as always I'll see you in a few seconds. And we are back. So starting as always with the unboxing experience, as you can see by the images, uh, it has a really clean package and in terms of the contents I will give you uh, a few seconds so that you guys can uh, read on the left side of the screen and check out for yourself some of the images that I took. Now regarding the first boot, uh, once we press the power button, the thing that we will find is the Windows 10 uh, setup uh, wizard and uh, we have a Windows 10 full licenses key included, which I will not show on screen because I'm using it, uh, but we will insert that key and activate Windows ourselves, which is not very usual these days with uh, cheaper devices, although this is not a really cheap device. Now once we have uh, the Windows 10 um installed. Uh, by the way, I would just like to mention that we can uh, proceed with the installation through the keyboard or with the touch screen and more on that in just a few seconds. Now regarding the uh, Windows 10 installation, once we finish that, in terms of curiosity, uh, just for those of you that love this type of benchmark, in terms of boot time, it takes roughly 40 seconds to boot. Uh, even now it takes roughly 40 seconds to boot, it's just not the first time, uh, it's actually the boot time of this device. And while I was talking I'm sure that I've given you enough time to see that on screen. Now taking a closer look at it, it has a really small and attractive keyboard uh, and gamepad with gaming in mind. The first thing that comes to my mind when I look at this it is gaming. Now the connectivity it's all on the back as you guys can see on screen and also once again on the lights on the left side of the screen I will give you uh, some more info. It has air vents on both sides and on the bottom uh, and it's not heavy, uh, doesn't feel cheap at all, uh, feels about right. I don't know how to explain this but it feels good. I do uh, believe that it's worth the price tag in terms of uh, build quality in general. Um, it has a 5.5 inch IPS panel with HD resolution with great colors and contrast as you guys uh, can see on screen. It has a glossy uh, panel so we will have some glare uh, when we have a lot of light and we will also have some fingerprints which is <laughs> unavoidable. Uh, it has a touch screen as I said and it's actually pretty accurate as you can see on screen I did uh, try to multiple times uh, even though it is a small screen 5.5 inch there are phones bigger than the screen of this device but as you can see on screen it's really accurate when I put uh, when I place my finger it actually uh, grabs and uh, uh, clicks the right place. In I would say that in about 10 uh, to 20 gestures it will fail once or twice but that is great for, for the size and uh, the accuracy of this uh, screen. Now in terms of the fan um, this has an active fan which we can switch on and off. It has three different levels uh, and I will show you, well I'll try to show you uh, with a few clips that I took in terms of noise right now. Uh, 
Now, taking a closer look at the keyboard itself, uh, it has some soft keys, really good quality keys, which is expected for the price uh, for this particular device. The gamepad has three modes, uh, the mouse mode, which is the one that we will be using more if we are on the desktop, on the Windows desktop. So we will have the joystick to move the mouse and then the L button, L1 button will uh, be the left click and the R2 button uh, will be the right click, as you guys can see. Uh, there on screen. Then we have the D-pad mode, which I didn't use that much. And finally, we have the X mode, which is the one that, especially when gaming, at least this is my uh, experience, I used this mode every single time that I was gaming, uh, all, not only on the device, but also through game streaming, which we are going to cover as well in a few seconds. Now, in terms of specifications, it runs the Intel Quad-Core Z8750 with 4 gigabytes of RAM and 43 gigabytes of free storage. It comes with 64, but we have 43, as you can see on screen, available to install uh, stuff. Now, moving along to the benchmarks, as you guys can see on screen, I did run network benchmarks on Wi-Fi and also on the Ethernet adapter, which is something that it's on the side, it's not included. Uh, for those of you that follow the channel, you know the Anchor uh, USB 3.0 to Ethernet adapter, and I did use it to compare some results. I also uh, tested out the disk speed of the internal uh, disk, as you can see some great results, and also the external SSD through USB 3.0 of this machine and it worked great. Not the full speed that we can get out of that particular SSD which is 430 megabytes per second but close enough and uh, acceptable. Now I also run Geekbench 3, uh, sorry Geekbench 4, 3D Mark Score Eye Storm Extreme so that you guys can compare uh, with other similar machines that are on the market. And talking about real world performance and starting with the gaming performance, uh, if you are looking for something to play games from the uh, Windows Play Store, the mobile uh, version games, then you will be more than fine as expected with similar machines that we have tested in the past here on the channel. Now I did try uh, Despicable Me as you can see on screen with a great experience there was no question about it and also Asphalt 8 Airborne and uh, the same experience. So I would say that any game available on the Play Store or on the Windows Store to be more accurate will be uh, played by this device without any effort at all. Now moving to the desktop gaming the, the, the story is completely different. This is a system without a dedicated GPU so don't expect expect AAA uh, games on this machine as it is. Now I'm showing you on screen um, the games that I played. I did play around with uh, Colin McRae which is a game with a few years. On low settings we can get a really decent uh, experience with 55 to 60 frames per second which is great but if I change it to high settings uh, we will have 18 to 20 frames per second which is not pleasant to uh, play at all. And I also tried with another desktop gaming which is Lego Lord of the Rings. This is the uh, Lord of the Rings, sorry, this is a game that my kid loves and we can play it on the default settings with 30 frames per second which is actually great. The experience was great for this kind of game. This is not a very old game but it played really really well. Now one of the things that I did love on the uh, older GPD version was the ability to game stream and this is actually Actually one of my favorite things as well on this version here. So if we want to really play demanding games this will be the way that we have to use. And for those of you that don't know what game stream is just search or I'll post a link right over here but search my YouTube channel I've got uh, several videos about that topic so and I'll post them on the uh, comment section down below which is easier so that you guys can see but it's uh, uh, basically the way that we can uh, uh, play games on smaller devices such as this one using our main computer computer to power and then I can take this to the living room, to my kitchen, anywhere that I've got network coverage and then play it on. And in terms of results as you guys can see on screen, uh, I did play around with Grid Auto Sport, a great experience, uh, no lag at all. Actually when I did the tests on the Wi-Fi speed of this machine I knew that I would be able to play any game and as you can see Grid Auto Sport, they're really great. Um, and then I also played uh, about, uh, I don't know how many minutes, <laughs> I did enjoy playing my, uh, with Gaz Guzzos uh, playing around here on the office and then also uh, Rocket League. I did uh, take this machine upstairs to the 
bedroom and test it out to the living room and it worked great. So all we need is a strong network connection and we will be able to enjoy this device, which is something that I really, really enjoy on any machine uh, to be able to play game stream. Now, when it comes to productivity in terms of office tasks, uh, this will be a limited machine, uh, especially because it's small, it has a small keyboard. And as I said, for me, uh, I have a hard time to, to read what's on screen. But this brings me to one of my favorite parts of any of this device, which is we can just uh, bring it home and connect it to our TV, a big screen TV or any uh, uh, computer monitor and use it as a workstation similar kind of device. And as you can see on screen there, I did connect uh, to my TV here off on the office and I can use a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, I can extend the display. I can mirror the display and work on Word, Excel and so on and so forth. So this is a great type of usage. Take it outside, use it as a pocket PC where I can do a lot of tasks and a lot of things or enjoy playing games. And then when we arrive home, we can just dock it and connect to a TV, connect to a display and use it with external um, mouse and keyboard and so on and so forth. Now, I, I was talking about productivity, but you can use this device also for multimedia uh, playback. We are always uh, testing out here on the channel, mini computers, Android TV boxes and so on and so forth. And this machine will be able to do all that and I did test around with Cody I was able to play although the screen is small I was able to play 4k content without any issues whatsoever as you guys can see on screen and also we can of course enjoy gaming in a bigger screen so let's say that you want to play on your living room on your big screen all we need to do is uh, connect a mini HDMI cable to a HDMI cable on the TV and then enjoy that gaming so in conclusion, guys, as you could see in the video, I'm really happy with the GPD Windows 10 version. It is one of those devices that I would recommend, but uh, it will depend on your budget. It will depend if you can justify the expense or not. If you are going to use it intensively, then I would say yes, uh, this is a great device. If not, then there are other solutions such as the GPD Android version, which is roughly half the price of this new one. Now, this is newer, it is cooler, it has Windows. One of the things that I did not mention is is that we can use game stream regardless of the AMD or Nvidia GPUs and so on but more questions on that just leave them uh, down below because this video is getting too long and that is it hopefully you guys found this video helpful and if you did don't forget that usual thumbs up as always my name is Roberto George and I'll see you on the next one